Welcome to our Parents of Families program town hall Zoom. Um, we'll get started and like usual, I'll give you a few updates and then we'll take questions. Um, so first I wanted to just take a moment to remember September 11th. Um, we all have so many things going on in our brains and COVID is its own special brand of crazy. But in 2001, we all remember what we were doing um, that day, September 11th in 2001. So I just wanted to take about maybe 30 seconds of silence for us to remember what we were doing in uh, when we were observing September 11th. And then um, I'll post a video to President Nelson um, who acknowledged September 11th in the chat. So just a few moments for you to reflect on what you were doing during September 11th. Okay, um, so in the chat, I put the link to the video of President Nelson acknowledging September 11th, and um, if you'd like to watch it, there it is. So I think our, our most significant um, announcement, which you likely know, is that yesterday, President Nelson sent out a message that we're going to be virtual for spring. Did you all see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so this decision was made by the chancellor of the CSU. So in case any of you have kiddos at any other schools, um, it's, it's system wide and there's, you know, a couple classes, there's a less than 7% of classes happening in person. So that's a big one. Um, I can post the link to the announcement if you'd like to see that. Um, any questions or comments about virtual virtual spring? Um, I have a question. <clears throat> Is this set in stone now, or would it possibly change if some, for some reason some miracle happens and <laughs> we get a, a vaccine that actually works and it seems like it's okay? I, I doubt that would happen um, the way things are going, but um, is it that's, that's it, the final decision? I don't think it's set in stone, but I do think that people um, like the staff want to plan. And in terms of um, planning purposes, it helps to kind of know where you think you're headed, right? So I think that if, if there were some sort of drastic change, you know, something might happen, but the university is going to move forward planning for virtual okay. spring. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, you know, being their first year, you know, being a freshman and they're so excited about having a college experience and having to um, do it this way. I mean, you know, sab there's nothing we can really do about it. <clears throat> it's, you know, it is what it is. But it does okay. teach flexibility and resilience, I suppose, and, you know, resourcefulness. So a good thing to learn when you're you know becoming an adult right <laughs> it is i mean i feel like i'm learning it every day you know with covid and everything that's happening myself you know we don't want to be virtual i don't want to be virtual and i you know the students get yeah i think all the students want to be in person everyone wants it in person so we all wish it was different hey adrian good to see you so um We'll have time for a little more discussion and Q&A in a few minutes, but I just wanted to check in on the virtual thing for a second and, you know, acknowledge I know no one wants that moving forward. So the next update I wanted to let you know about is just to acknowledge the fires throughout our state. 
And you may or may not have seen a message from President Nelson about air quality and its impact on campus today. So what that message said was, you know, for anyone who's on campus, which there, you know, there are some people who live on campus. Um, there's about, you know, 450 students who moved onto campus. Um, classes are still happening for any, you know, all virtual classes and any classes happening in person. But if there were any outdoor activities like a athletic practice, that would be canceled. Um, so in terms of acknowledging the fires, I'm just so sorry for anyone that might be affected by this. Um, if your family has been evacuated, um, please let us know and we can get in touch with your students, faculty members. Um, and just for, so it's just such a tough time for everyone and the fires are so widespread as is the smoke, it's hard enough to be inside. Um, but then, you know, everyone's sense of safety is also disrupted right now. And oh, it's just a lot. So I wanted to acknowledge that. Um, in terms of a little bit of breathing room, shifting gears, um, many of you have had questions. Our next announcement is about financial aid. So many of you have had questions over the past few weeks about your students' financial aid not showing up in their student center. And basically, um, financial aid got a little backlogged, their processing. And so to get all the um, documents virtually and to get them uploaded, they ended up extending the deadline for payment to October 2nd, in case that is affecting any of you. Um, you might want to ask your student to check their student center, or you can check their student center and see if that October 2nd deadline applies for you. Um, all right, so that's kind of it for the, the significant updates. I mean, we, I've gotten a lot of questions about schedules and changing schedules and classes and virtual instruction. Um, and so I know that you're all dealing with different things. I want to open it up and have us have time to talk and say hello, see how you're doing, see what your students are up to. and. Um, Beth, is your student quite frustrated or are they managing emotions? Um, <clears throat> she's actually in a kind of a unique situation. Well, she was supposed to go into the dorms and, and I think that was disappointing because she was excited to meet new students and, <clears throat> you know, get to know people. Um, I think that that part's disappointing. Um, I think because the last part of high school was online that they sort of got introduced to being online. Um, so she's just dealing with it, you know, I mean, you know, it's not ideal. Um, she, she ended up um, getting to move up to that area. We're in the Los Angeles area and she ended up getting to move up there. Um, she, uh, has a horse she rides horses and there was a horse facility up there that they needed a working student you know to help with all the other horses and also get lessons on hers and they had a um a room for her they have another girl there from germany that's been there for a student who's like 19 or 20 and a few other young people that work there so she she's actually and she has her own little place her own little room so she doesn't have to be like exposed to people you know because of covid so she, um, she's, she's excited to actually get out of the house and, <laughs> you know, kind of get that experience of living on her own, so to speak. But I think she would, of course, rather be on campus and be getting immersed in Sac State and meeting everybody, you know. So it's, it's kind of frustrating, but then, you know, <clears throat> what do you do, you know? I mean, it's hard. It is hard. We're right there. I mean, I know there are other people. Um, Adrian, you're on that side of me. I know there are other people who can speak to what it's like to have just moved a brand new freshman in on campus. And I'll ask Adrian to do that. But Beth, just to empathize for a minute, my stepdaughter is 18. She starts Cal Poly on Monday virtually. And she has been super positive all summer. 
but she didn't move. Um, a couple of her friends actually did move down to Cal Poly and, you know, everyone kind of saw what happened with Chico State. If you didn't hear what happened with Chico State, they had, you know, the, within the first week of their residence halls being open, they had um, 30 positive cases of COVID and the next week they had 136 positive cases of COVID. And so it's just a tough decision right now. Um, it really is. But yes, I mean, I can see my stepdaughter. She's so frustrated and she is such a bright student and she wants to be engaged and involved and she doesn't want to sit in front of a computer for six hours. So, you know. Um, Adrian, do you mind telling Beth a little bit about your experience? Oh, not at all. Um, so we live in Elk Grove and I don't know if you know that's 25 minutes away from Sac State. We still put our son on campus. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy because it's like 25 minutes away. Um, he's working also in El Grove. I kid you not, he's home three days a week. So um, we were dying to get that experience for him, um, that freshman, because you know his senior year was cut short as well. And we're just like feeling bad for him. And he was coming out of his shell and he was getting more friends and we're like oh my gosh he's kind of talking to us now <laughs> you know, he's, he's still that kid that is like how's it going fine you know he doesn't talk much yeah. but he's now he's on campus he likes the independence he's um i guess he's sort of meeting people but then he works on the weekends so then he drives back over here and he works friday saturday sunday um I don't know if this is was the best decision that we did, but I know that he's enjoying this independence and he's kind of getting some some stimulation. I'm hoping does the um I don't know, Haley, did you cover if the well is gonna open at all or the gym at all? I haven't um heard any updates. I think while I I'll check really quick, I'll see if there's anything new. Um so far, what I know is it's not open. So my concern is now, since now this, I, I came on late because I was like rushing home to get here. But is, so has it been confirmed that spring is now going to be online as well? Okay. So that's my next concern because I'm, I'm wondering, this is a very expensive experiment. Does it make sense for him to still stay in the dorms if it's going to be online anyway? Um, and he lives 25 minutes away from home. So that's kind of what we're kind of toying with, just finding that out. It's like, okay, you had your experience and you're still not gonna be able to congregate on the campus. And it, it almost doesn't make sense to be in the dorms again. So I'm kind of sad about that, but um, I, I don't, I, I even don't want to tell him yet because I want him to, I don't want him to have the mindset of, well, I'm not gonna see these people anyway, so I may as well just, you know, not get engaged in my experience right now. Does that make sense? Of course. Okay. So, okay. So I don't know. So I want to talk about that. Um, that's a long conversation. I want to acknowledge Denise. Hi, Denise. Um, I, my daughter lives in Elk Grove too, and we're living in Elk Grove. And she's on campus too. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm not the only crazy person. <laughs> Um, softball player, so all the team is on campus, and she's like, um, she's enjoying her experience. They've got their really strict guidelines about, you know, how many people can be on a floor in a room, out, masks, all that, all that stuff. Yep. She's like, they're all the girls are really kind of going with the flow, and they, um, they're enjoying the little bit of independence. She did tell me that she was coming home every Sunday to do her laundry, though. Yep, same here. <laughs> He said the the laundry room's facility he tried to do a load the other day and it wasn't working properly. Oh, those kids learning those complicated things. <laughs> yeah, and then somebody <laughs> he reached out for help and like I don't know I don't I can't help you. So I'm like okay, well go ask the person at the front desk. Hello. Did you know they don't take quarters anymore? They take okay. Like, he they said he did that and then he slid it and it still wasn't working. He just has to get instruction, I guess. But he came home and he's doing his laundry today. So he'll be home later. 
Well, Beth, we need to get your daughter maybe connected with some other people to meet yeah. some Sac State students. Yeah. She'd love that. I think she would really love that. Yeah. Maybe if um, Adrian and Denise, I mean, it's like setting up a, a play date for 18 year olds. Like, are they going to be okay with that? Yes. <laughs> My son is social. He's, he talks to everyone else. He just doesn't really talk to me that much. <laughs> I think what it's kind of normal. I mean, he's a good kid. He's nice, but you know. Yeah. What what majors are they going for? Do they know yet? What do they have? A, they decided on a major. Business. My oh. husband has his own business, and he wants to do what he's doing. But we're just like, okay, that's fine. But just go get your degree, and, and that may or may not be what you end up doing. But yeah, we'll see. But yeah, business. That's what he's. Kennedy's um, environmental studies. Nice. Oh, we need that. We do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Denise, what is your daughter's name? Kennedy Eccles. She's um, on the softball team. Okay. And, and Beth, again, what's your daughter's name? Ava Dingley. D is in David, I-N-G-L-E-Y. She's in, um, she's, she's majoring in, um, uh, biokinesiology. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> um, she wants to go, she wants to go into medicine somehow. Um, Very good. she was on the sports med team at high school and loved, you know, doing that. And, um, I don't know where in medicine she go, but you know, I figured she's guaranteed us some sort of job if she goes into it. So <laughs> somewhere, <Okay>. somehow. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I'd love to connect my son with, with whoever, you know, your daughters. And um, what high school you know, did your son go to? He went to Elk Grove High. Oh, okay. She was at CO. Okay. Okay. That's around, I live near both of them. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Very good. Um, I'm getting a question in the chat from Mrs. Maloney. Mrs. Maloney is asking, when will applications be available for living on campus in the spring? Your son is going to have to take a lab in person, junior mechanical engineering student. So that should be available um, around October 1, the application for spring. And I think this is a good opportunity to talk about Adrian, what you asked. And I think Beth, that's also relevant for you to consider. Denise, your daughter as a student athlete, like she's gotta be there, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I think, the, I think the question is why? You know, why are, there's the why for you and there's the why for your students. And I feel like both people's why has to be satisfied for mm -hmm. the money to be worth it. Cause it's a huge cost and without all the benefits that students would normally get. So if the why is independence, it's definitely doing that, you know? Um, if the why is campus life to live on campus, there's some of that. It's certainly more than living at home. It's certainly more than only interacting on the computer. It's limited though. It's really limited. Um, cannot like truncated experience justify the cost. Yeah. I think it's really, you got to kind of talk with your student about if they are, you know, are you talking to anyone? I talked with a dad last week whose son is just really abiding by all the rules, but he's not leaving his room mm. at all and he's feeling very isolated. So if that's the case, you know, if you've got that sort of child, he's not asking the question, is it worth it? His son wants to be there, needs to be there, has some in-person labs. But I think also if your student, you know, what is your student's why for living on campus? Um, I think you really have to look into that. Good question, and that's a good way of looking. Mm -hmm. and how do they write it down because you're going to forget in a year and you're going to think like you know depending on where we're at well you know what if we're i hate to throw this out there but like what if we're still in the same scenario in a year and you're uh, gonna, <laughs> I 
right? <laughs> it's like over it. I don't want to think about it either. So but, over it. But so. as you consider your budget and the choices you're making and your students' lives as they're growing yeah. up, coming of age, and still persisting in college during COVID, what's worth it here? Like, what sort of experience are we building? What skills are we building? Like, is there time for a transition? Um, mm -hmm. You know, does having them, encouraging them to stay at home, does it, I mean, this is like the big experiment, right? Like, does it stunt development somehow? Um, I think just yesterday, my husband and I had this quick interaction because my stepdaughter was so snippy and she was so in a bad mood and um, it's all because orientation is online and um, he said you know she's supposed to be having this attitude like we're not supposed to see it <laughs> she's supposed to be away from us when she has this attitude growing up becoming her own independent adult but you know not so much right now yeah do they have um meetings at, or like can they do like it with the for the kids that are in the dorm right now that could they do like an outdoor um like kind of meet and greet so they at least meet some of the other kids at, at a social distancing situation where maybe they wouldn't feel like you know like you said that the one uh the one student who was sort of more isolating himself in his room where they could they could actually kind of interact with you know at a social distancing outdoor situation maybe would that help you yeah, know, they that? do have they do have those sort of organized things called um, the residence hall association, and there is a resident advisor on every floor, and they're invited to go to um, like these sorts of things you're talking about occasionally, or go to dinner as a group, like walk over to dinner and then sit out on the grass and eat. Everybody has to get their meal to go on campus. But it's just kind of timing, like if your student's in the bathroom when somebody comes by, or if your student doesn't feel comfortable because they're strangers, it's like that personal tolerance for risk. And we almost, you know, we don't know what our students would do um, until they get in that scenario. And maybe they don't know what they would do, right? Like, oh, I really, I'm so lonely and I really want to hang out with Adrian's son, but then here's this stranger at my door and I suddenly feel like, Hmm. I feel awkward about it. And then we're going to go eat where we take our masks off. Am I the weird one? You know, the students get so insecure, like, Ooh, everyone's going to think weird about me. I'll just not deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> Denise, what's your daughter's um, experience been like in terms of just like, has she talked to you about getting meals or um, yeah. So she, um, they're, kind of um it looks like they're kind of restricted to like your floor so if you live on the fourth floor you you're not visiting folks on the third that kind of thing and then on your floor only one other person could be in your room at a time and so every time you come to your room that you're you're make sure that you're masked um they have been kind of doing some kind of con their coaches have them um doing um, what would normally be their practice where they're all together and conditioning and all that stuff for like the fall, they are in really small groups and they go, I, I don't know how many are in a group at a time, but they're in really small groups to go to like practice hitting or to do conditioning. They're at different times throughout the day. They're really, really spread out, but they go like to, um, a lot of them um, have, they go to DC kind of, but they um, eat like, they have food, you know, my daughter's got a refrigerator, uh, she's got a, um, a Nutribullet and she's got a microwave and she's got things that she, they kind of, she's miscreative. So figuring out food in her dorm, but um, they go over, um, I don't know for all meals, but for, you know, at least one meal a day, they'll go over together and then they'll sit out. I guess there's an area that's um, in be, like in the dorm, um, she's in Riverview. So there's a like a little sitting area that's kind of in the middle of the two sides. I can't, uh, they call it something, I'm not sure what it is. But, but they sit there and they're social distance, uh, you know, um, apart. And then um, they just kind of head up back to their room. But essentially those that are on the same floor, there's like eight people that are assigned to like a bathroom or assigned to certain areas, on, you know, on the, on the floor. And so that's kind of the little circle, the little cohort that you kind of stay in. And then, um, 
they've been like she what she's like jogged to target and things like that there'll be a couple of them that'll go but they've been really good about keeping their coaches are really um on them about making sure when they're out and about they're keeping their masks on that they're just really just in your group who's essentially kind of like in your your family your how you would be in your house that's the kind of group you that's the group you really kind of hang with that's who you practice with and then that's kind of it they've been doing a really good job and i just talk to her pretty much every day but they've been doing a good job of um you know following being you know following the rules so it's a it's a it's not quite the experience you know that you know, she expected but it is some so like we were saying um the ability to gain independence and stuff like that i think that um there's some of that there's there's you know it's there's some of it and i think that it's worth it for them to be there i would add that even though this is not the ideal situation they are getting an experience that they don't know any different you know, coming out of high school and going under these circumstances, even though it's not as, you know, congregating with others and, and, and doing that, they don't know any different. I mean, as far as your first freshman year, I'm not saying that's good, but that's what you they know, know. it's either that or he can be here at home in his room, um, you know, and going to work and he's still kind of hanging out with his friends once in a while. So it's, you know, I don't yeah. know. That's why my daughter moved up there. It was like either be with mom and dad. <laughs> Yay. Or <laughs> live in a barn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool though. That's yeah. cool. She's loving it. She's loving it. And she's loving being independent. She's figured out that yes, that gigantic pile of laundry actually she has to do now. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Uh it's good. She's learning some things, but I, you know, I, I mean, hopefully by sophomore year, they'll, they'll be together and it'll be great. They'll be so thrilled. Yeah. You know, yeah. it'll, it, you know what? I hope by then things will be fine and it'll mean so much more to all of them. You know what I mean? They'll be like, ah, oh, there you all are. You know, it'll be great. You just have to try to get over this part. Yeah. I wanted to say hi to Ingrid and say welcome. Thanks for hi. joining. <laughs> I was looking in the wrong email for the link. So I had notifications telling me where, that I had a meeting, but I couldn't find <laughs> where I was going. So it was sent to my work email, which I should have been in all along, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just went over a couple updates that were super fast before you got here, basically talking about the, um, I'm sure you saw that spring semester was announced to be virtual. Yeah, we got that. Well, I work, I work at Cal Poly, so I got it oh. at work yesterday. <laughs> okay, there you go. In the afternoon. Yeah, just before I logged out. So, yeah, it's okay. And we just have a couple of our parents are talking about their experiences with their students and how old their students are. Um, I wanted to actually take a moment and introduce um, Diana Rivera, who's on the phone and she, or on the Zoom. Um, and she is the parent of a new student, and she's also going to be a parent ambassador. Diana, do you mind introducing yourself to the group and telling everyone um, who your student is, what she's studying, where you live? Hi, everyone. Um, sorry, my video is not working today. Um, my name is Diana, and we are from the Los Angeles area. Uh, my daughter, freshman student. Um, her major as of now is biochemistry. Uh, she's adapting well to all of this. Um, in short, she made up her own mind and she decided she was just going to stay home. Um, health over everything, safety over everything. And I guess just to gain a little bit more of her independence, she took on a part-time job and, you know, she's doing her own thing, even though she's still here at home and yeah, that's pretty much it. She's overall, she's doing well. I mean, it is a little bit overwhelming being in front of the computer for so long, but yeah, we just have to roll with it for now and do the best that we can. And I'm excited to be part of this, seeing all of you guys, meeting all of you guys. Thanks, Diana. Um, Adrian, just to follow up on what you asked. So right now the well is closed. Um, and it looks like there is the request out for the well to open, um, but it's based on Sacramento County's um, restrictions right now. 
and really they're trying to promote their virtual on-demand programming which is on their website not the same yeah ingrid do you mind um telling us a little bit about who you are who your student is and how your student is doing my student is um her name's michelle and she's there on campus in riverview hall and um, i'm here in chino hill so la area and um she She's going to school to be, she's in the, going for the nursing program, but she wants to be a certified midwife. So we'll see, you know, life changes, but that's her goal for now. And um, she seems to like it a lot. I, I think my concern for her is she is, she will isolate naturally. And so now she's in a single room isolated. And so she goes, well, mom, you can't go out. You can't do this. You can't. So um, in a sense, it's playing into something I was hoping she'd, um, have some growth in that area, but, um, you know, it'll come, I guess. So, I mean, she gets embarrassed by stuff very easily. She goes to the, you know, when she goes to get her food, she goes, I get enough food so I don't have to go back, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> she just hangs out in her room with her little, um, you know, coffee pot and whatever. She's finding creative ways to use that <laughs> for things so she doesn't have to go back. But, um, there is another uh, young lady there from her high school but she's in basketball, so she kind of have, has already a, a group, you know, to, uh, to be with, I guess. So, but she seems to be doing well. Um, I'm very surprised that she makes it to her 7.30 a.m. class. <laughs> but I guess it's easier when you don't have to actually get up and get there. So I'm very, very happy that that's working out for her. Yeah. What year is she? This is her first year. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... When Diana was sharing about her daughter's job, she had to, she left her job because she was working at Luna Grill down here. So last night we were talking about um, her trying to see what work study jobs were available with um, this whole virtual thing, so that she can um, access those work study funds through um, her handshake and get her job. I think that's it. Did I answer all the questions? <laughs> yeah, um, I just posted. Um, I have a position open for parents and families program where work study students are preferred. Um, and that's what I told her. I said, when we hire, we look for work study students because it doesn't have to come out of our budget, you know, because they have the funding. Um, and then if it goes over, you still are not paying a full salary. You know, if you ask them to do special projects or anything um, in summer or during break. So um, I'll have to let her know. <laughs> it's been handshake. <laughs> Well, does anyone have any um, any questions or anything they want to talk with the group about or share before we, you know, I want to be respectful of everyone's time um, before we go. Yeah, I'm just, I apologize for being late. <laughs> so. No problem. We're casual here. I have a, I have a one question. Oh, my dog's barking. Hold on one second. I'm going to mute myself for a second. I'm so sorry. I'm going to ask really quick and then I'm going to mute myself again. Um, my one thing is, is that, you know, their motivation to get their work done in class. I just worry about that being online instead of in person where you have that motivation and that encouragement as opposed to having to like really be, you know, like get that motivation and, and, and encouragement from yourself to get everything done and on time and understand where to go online. Um, have you seen people kind of have a little more of a struggle with that um, during this time? Yes. So there are a lot of resources, but they're, um, they're available virtually. So for instance, there's a, a center called the Peer Academic Resource Center, and the acronym is PARC, P-A-R-C. And PARC employs students, and they're like peer coaches, and PARC does individual subject tutoring and they also host workshops on things like time management and um, the ability to stay motivated and meet academic goals a component of that is time management and i think in the virtual world time management gets a little time time gets a little 
strange when we're just on the computer all the time. We can't go outside. Um, my kids seem to be better at remembering what day it is than I do. Yeah. But, you know, so these resources exist and Beth, they're kind of like, you know, human beings like me at their houses waiting to have these one-on-one -on -one appointments with students. And it's all promoted on the website and it's all promoted on the social media. And then there's like workshops they can attend with other students. And then there's like a presentation that they could just watch a video of. It's all there. What does it take to get your student who may not want to be on the computer anymore to watch that video or go to a workshop? So this question of motivation is really a tricky one. Um, the resources are there. So sometimes I guess I would say like the purpose of this program is to tell you as a parent, so you have all this information because they get the information too, but they think they care about other things, right? It's, they can forget. Mm -hmm. And so when things get to the point where they're really frustrated and they let it spill to you, you have these resources and you can say, Hey, um, I know of this place called the park and they might be able to help you with some time management. Or the Career Center can help you find a federal work study job. You can have a one on one chat like this with someone from the Career Center 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, same thing with academic advising. So it's just kind of getting our students to engage through like making on demand requests. But it's a little different, right? It's a little more involved than watching a Netflix video. I know motivation from home is uh, I don't pay for failed classes. So if she fails a class, it comes out of her yeah. savings. Grandma had built a savings for her. And um, I will subtract that fee from her savings if, um, in fact, um, <laughs> she yes. not, we, I mean, I didn't have a job in high school, but you just, college is different. So I thought I better step it up with a, a new rule um, that mom doesn't pay for um, anything below. A C plus. I told her. I told her a B plus. But <laughs> <laughs> we, did same, we did the same thing. It's like it's coming out of your pocket if it's. If it's yeah. So if she sees her savings dwindle, she'll realize that maybe she should pay attention. But yeah, we haven't had a problem. But like I said, with college and being on her own, I don't know. So I just reminded her of that rule, and then. Um, and with her bank account, you know, it deposits, I log in, I take half of it, it goes to her savings because she doesn't need to spend, what is she spending money on really? You know, so her tiny little car, it only takes what, 30 bucks to fill it up. And where does she have to go? Dutch Bros, that's like her place that she's been driving to, you know? So um, Dutch Bros and Target is kind of the places she's found. But um, yeah, that's our from home motivation anyways. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Ingrid. So, you know, sometimes I end up talking with parents who are having a really hard time with their students. And one of the things that we'll do, um, like this is for students who are basically failing all their classes, but they haven't told their parents and their parents end up finding out through maybe a year or, you know, the student is going to be kicked out on academic probation. Um, they're on academic probation, then they don't meet the grades. Mm -hmm. And so maybe they finally will tell their parents and the parents call me. Um, and so then they want to know like, okay, my student can fill out this petition. Let's say they do everything they need to do and they get um, accepted back into the university on the second chance. Am I going to pay for it? How do I decide how long I'm going to pay for it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what circumstances happen in my kid's life. And I have this contract that I'll send people and it has no marking on it, right? It's just words on a page. And it basically says kind of what you said, Ingrid, like this is how much money. So usually I have this conversation with people after their students have been at Sac State for quite a while. And so I'll ask them to calculate how much money they've spent so far and put it in the contract and say, you know, my time and my money has gone to you and I could be doing other things with this money. My life is being influenced by your lack of responsibility. Moving forward, if I'm going to pay for you, here's your agreement. You will get this grade point average by this time. This is a contract. If you don't, if you, you must sign it. And if you don't, you know, live up to what you're signing, then you're done. This is your last chance. Yeah. And 
those are tough conversations and some parents will do it and some won't. Yeah. And the other side of it is because she's taking, um, you know, my tuition reimbursement, I'm not starting my PhD because, or my EDD or whichever, because she's using it, you know, and, and it's not, you know, it's not begrudgingly. It's just, you know, only one of us can use it at a time. And obviously I knew when she came along, mine would stop so that she would be able to take advantage of that. Um, so she knows, you know, there's, there's goals for that, for those funds. And so if she doesn't use them, you know, they won't just be sitting there, you know. I do. I think it's so important to tell our students as they're becoming adults, this, <laughs> this money could be going to something else. So, you know, we are investing in you. I am investing in you. You are investing in you mm -hmm. in time and money. Yeah, yeah I kind of joke with her that I'm investing in the little casita in the back of her, her mansion where I will live when she's taking care of me. <laughs> so. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our town hall Zoom. Um, life just gets stranger with COVID and the smoke and the fires. Um, please stay safe, stay healthy. We're here for you, Parents and Families Program. We'll see you again, same Zoom link in two weeks on the 25th.